Hey internet, welcome back to another video. Let's talk about time blocking today. If you don't know me already, my name is Mark and I'm a senior at NYU studying computer science and linguistics. A while back, a friend of mine asked about my time blocking habits and I finally got around to putting my thoughts into the form of a video. I'm going to kick off the video by briefly explaining what time blocking is, how it's used, and more specifically how you can get started today. Then I'll go ahead and talk about how time blocking changed how I work and honestly changed a lot of my life. Time blocking, by adapted definition, is putting aside predetermined sections of your days to work on something specific. These predetermined, and I want to put emphasis on predetermined sections of the day are time, sections of time, aka time blocks. I have class from 2 p.m. to 3.45 on Mondays and Wednesdays, boom, time block. Want to work on a video from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on Mondays and Thursdays, boom, time block. Time blocking is like a giant puzzle, at least to me. I'm a really visual person, so that's the approach I'm gonna take to it in this video. I will touch upon this more specifically in the getting started section, but time blocking is all about setting aside a list of priorities for your tasks, putting them into a calendar or a list if you prefer, and then getting to work when that time arrives. It gets everything out of your head and either onto Google Calendar, a spreadsheet, or even just pencil and paper. This way you don't have to worry about, ah, when am I next gonna practice Russian? I don't have time. When's my next art block? You're already setting aside times for that right now. Present you is looking out for future you. And to me, that's the core idea of time blocking, being the manager of your future self. You're not just saying, oh, I'll do this later, but you're saying, okay, I'll do this from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Wednesday. Later is the busiest time of your life, so you may as well organize it. Scheduling is this structure that I've learned to rely a lot upon, and it gives me a certain sense of freedom, but some people have asked, well, don't you feel really restricted by scheduling every single part of your day? No, it makes me feel more relaxed, actually, because I'm saying, oh, I know when I'm next gonna do this thing. I don't have to stress about when my next game development time block is. I don't have to stress about when I'm next gonna practice Russian. I've already decided to do those things at some point in the future. I already have time put aside, and if I need to move it, then I can move it. This idea kind of solidified in my head when I heard the following Jordan Peterson quote. It's not a bloody prison. Set the damn schedule up so you have the day you want. Negotiate with yourself and don't tyrannize yourself. And he's totally right about that, especially the not tyrannizing yourself part. The day that I want is my classes surrounded by working on game development, working on videos, practicing my art, learning Russian. That's the day that I want, but if that doesn't happen, that's okay. If I have to suddenly go grocery shopping because I realize I ran out of eggs, all right, I'll move Russian to the next day. I'm prioritizing things, but they can still change, most of them at least. From what I believe is the same video, he says, make a damn schedule. You are useless and horrible, so you probably will only hit it with 50% accuracy, but that beats the hell out of zero. Now, I don't think you're useless or horrible. However, let's change that into you will procrastinate. You will procrastinate, so you will probably only hit it with 50% accuracy. Everyone procrastinates at one point or another, no matter the form. However, by scheduling things, you fight that procrastination and while you don't totally get away from it, you still get a little bit done. That hour and a half of language learning turns into half an hour, but without the hour and a half block, it would just never be there. All right, let's get started with some practical application. I'll show you how I tend to block out my weeks and we'll go from there. The first thing that I recommend you do is write out your list of priorities. The first things that you should be writing down are those that you have committed to, or as I like to put it, have external deadlines. So that's school or work or something that is really totally outside of your control. For me, we'll go ahead and say that's my classes and the tutoring hours that I have to make up throughout the week. Then come the things that you want to do the most, and please do limit this at the start. It's better to start with a few things and ramp it up over time than start with a bunch of things and then fall off the train as I've experienced many, many times. This is an iterative process, so you know it might not magically make you more productive. It took me 13 months or so before I thought, you know what, this rhythm actually works for me. And even then this might change again within a few months. So if you haven't already, pause the video to write down those priorities, maybe drop them in the comments below. If you wanna share them with us so you can come back and see how you've changed over time. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is open up either a calendar app, so I will be using over down here, Windows Calendar. I have set up all my calendars on Google Calendar though, which I would recommend. So like if I have a repeating event, it's on Google Calendar. I just like Windows Calendar because it's got a dark theme, it's square, it looks nice, yada, yada, yada. You can also use a paper planner and some highlighters if you so choose, but I would recommend you grab something to color code. The fundamental idea of my format of time blocking is all about the colors of my calendars or you know the highlighters that you might choose to fill in time on your planner. Your first step is to take that first priority, that thing with an external deadline and draw that into your calendar. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and tick a box here and that is my class schedule. So these are things that are out of my control. I cannot say, you know what? I'm gonna do my performance class later actually. Now the next thing is going to be this calendar. 
and you can see where it says mark drop and tutoring those things i can't change green is my you know daily calendar more or less so i have my bed and read and my wake up in there things that shouldn't change the tutoring hours can't change but the the green and purple have a distinction <laughs> but these are my concrete things these are things that i cannot move the times of everything else relies on these two calendar foundations. In other words, this is the start to your puzzle. Everything else fits into what you see here. The next thing I'll do is draw in my video times, so the ones you're seeing here, and my seashell game development times. Those are the most important hobbies to me, so they come up next. Game design and animation. <laughs> if you want to check out what all of these pink blocks are about, check out my devlogs every Friday. And then lifestyle videos. Now I have a default week set up, and I'll get to that in a bit, but for this week, this is what it's looking like. I would recommend for any hobby, don't push yourself too hard. To put it one way, 15 minutes of guitar practice every day is so much better than two hours every week or so. It's much easier to build a habit that is consistent than one that is intense. One rule you can follow for this is Matt Diavella's two-day rule that essentially states that you don't go more than two days without doing something. You did guitar practice on Monday, but you don't have it scheduled in for Tuesday and Wednesday? Get it in on Thursday. I have a link to his video in the description down below though, and it might be on the card up here. Here. All you need to do is, going through the rest of your priorities and such, draw in the rest of the times on your calendar. This is where the color coordination comes in really important. If everything was the same exact color, you would just be looking at a wall of activities, a wall of hobbies and work. There would be no visual distinction between what is classes, what is game development, what is videos. To put it one way, instead of doing, oh, I have six hours of work to do today, it's, okay, I have three hours of classes, an hour and a half of recording a video, two hours of tune tanks, let's get it. So this color coding, while I'm not a big fan of it, in pretty much any other regard, this feels to me really important. And putting in emojis makes things a lot more exciting. I have emojis on my to-do list and my Trello as well. There is a science to when you can schedule things around your most optimal times of the day. So I'll link an article down below in the description, but color coding gets us excited for all the different things we get to do. I get really excited for blue blocks. And if I go ahead and check my skill improvement calendar, I get really excited for, oh, hey, you know, I'm doing bag work later. I moved my language learning from this morning to later tonight. Now, this can be fun in a way, and I think it's a really good way to plan your day, but I must give you a quick word of warning. If you want to, schedule in breaks for yourself or leave some time open on your calendar. While it is a puzzle, you do not need to complete this puzzle. I try to be done by 8 p.m. every night and anything that shows up beyond that is, with the exception of tutoring, something I do for fun. Live streaming video games, for example. And that's just the plan. These empty time blocks are great for A, you know, you don't have to go minute to minute throughout the day. If you need to push something back, you can push something back. It acts as a little buffer time if you need it to, but also scheduling breaks in and of themselves is super important. I look forward to working on all these different hobbies, but sometimes it becomes too much, and so I'll just yeet things off to another day. The thing that's so nice about time blocking is that you have this visual representation of where your time is going. I know when I'm going to want to next work on videos. I know when I'm going to next want to work on Russian. It's not five minutes of this, 10 minutes of this, go do this, 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 and this, this. I have dedicated times that I can look at that I've decided in the past of what I'm gonna do today and tomorrow. It's so great because you get to just fill in these empty blocks with what you want to do, putting aside time for those things. It's so dangerous because you can just fill in these empty blocks with things that you want to do. So please, after your first uh, external deadline, perhaps your classes, put in an hour hour in the morning and an hour in the evening for chill time, for a social time, whatever it might be. Give yourself a break to look forward to. You don't always have to be on the clock. In fact, you shouldn't always be on the clock. Here's a picture of what my week looks like at the start. These are recurring events. So I have Monday and Thursday video blocks set up constantly. I have development blocks set up constantly. But then after I edit a week retroactively, here's what that looks like. You can go back and edit your week at the end because it's great for reflecting. Slacked off and watched an hour and a half of anime? Well, draw that in on a separate calendar so that when you go back, you can say, oh, okay, duly noted. Here's a picture of last spring, actually, when I came back from Paris, all the times I got distracted. So this is a picture of that. Identify your problems so you can solve them. Now you can do this weekly or daily, whatever is best for you. These systems that work for me or work for Thomas Frank or work for Ali Abdal, they're great to learn from because we get to try them out, but don't feel obligated to stick to it. My recipe for productivity does not necessarily mean it's yours. My system comes from probably 15 different sources of things that I've tried over the past three years and took me two and a half years to get to something that feels good for me. 
All in all, you find what works for you and take it at your own pace and build up over time. Doing something small at the start creates a good foundation for when you take the next step. Don't look at me as an example, just base it off what you feel is right. And don't schedule your entire day. Give yourself open blocks, time to talk with friends, time to read or watch TV. There's a lot of empty space when we start to time block. And so filling those things ahead of time makes it less likely for us to say, okay, I'll just do that later and watch Netflix now. But we need to leave some of those blocks open and leave them open for Netflix. Rush in the morning, Netflix in the night. But for me, scheduling has been about one thing. And if you do take anything away from this video, let it be this. Present me is planning what future me does because future me must do what past me has planned for him. Present me is chasing these goals that I'd say I would do later. And so I'm telling myself concrete times to do them later. And future me has things that he wants to schedule. So I have to get things done now. In a brief attempt to explain that, there are things that I want to do and places where I want to be that require me to do things. Some of those things are simply unattainable without some sort of schedule. For example, if I just tell myself, oh, I'll practice Russian every day, that doesn't work for me. If, however, I put aside time to practice Russian on Tuesdays and Thursdays, that works for me. I'm making a commitment to say, okay, future Mark, we put aside time to do this in the past, so let's do it now. You keep saying later, but now is later. Putting aside time for the commitment that I've made invalidates the excuse of, oh, I'll do it later because I've already said I'll do it later and I've already put it at a time for later and that later has become now. And so if I say I'll do it later, then I already know that I won't do it later. Does that make any sense? It's better to make the time for things before they actually happen because otherwise we look back in the past and say we didn't have any time, but then we realize we watched an entire season of Daredevil in a week. One of the things that has helped me the most, especially with time blocking is that the day something is assigned, take five minutes, five minutes to just break it down and schedule it out. I have a grammatical analysis piece set due on Thursday. When it was assigned on, I think Friday, we got the email. I said, okay, we're gonna do part one on Tuesday and part two on Wednesday. Then we type it up Thursday morning and boom, we're done. It's just so great to start on something the day it's assigned because you don't actually have to start, but you do read it. You change an assigned essay from this 10 page mystery to, Okay, you know, I actually have an idea for the prompt they gave us. Whether you put it in the calendar or put it on a list, breaking your assignment down and not just saying you'll start it later, but having a concrete goal to work on, I believe will make you a lot less stressed. So I encourage you to give it a shot. It's worth at least trying, right? Time blocking also allows us to give even more meaning to time. Instead of saying, oh, I didn't have time. It becomes, oh, you know, I wanted to do Russian practice in the morning, but I wasn't able to do that for the past three weeks. Let's change that. For me, it started with just my classes and just scheduling schoolwork. 13 months later, I was able to incorporate so many more things in and a few months after that, which is today, we're in a pretty good place. That being said, the last thing that I love about time blocking is that it tells me what I wanna do tomorrow. I sit down at the start of the day and I know what I'm gonna do. I don't have to organize anything. I don't have to choose what to do. I already know. I sit down and I say, okay, I'm doing these readings and I'm doing game development. And if something comes up, something comes up. It still takes me a while to get things started. And as you saw, I still push a lot of things back. It creates a clear idea of what I need to do now in the short term in order to get to where I want to be in the long term. So yeah, I've been scheduling things since the fall of 2019. I used to be adamant about no Google Calendar, but it's been so helpful to me. And over several, several months, I have just iterated my own process and I've gotten to a place where it streamlines my entire days. Creating your own workflow will take time, so do be patient with yourself. But it's just that, your own pace, your own workflow, and your own evolution. But evolution only comes to those who seek change in the first place. If you're willing to change things up a little bit, try scheduling just one or two basic priorities. See where it takes you. What's the worst that can happen? I'm not some productivity ubermensch either. Creating a calendar and using Todoist has just made me be able to do all the things that I've always wanted to do. It's no longer, ah oh, man, I gotta do seashell development and making videos and do all this with schoolwork tomorrow. There's no, okay, I gotta do this tomorrow. It's, I am doing this tomorrow, specifically from 3 p.m. to 5.30. And that there is the essence of time blocking. Thanks so much for watching, but without further ado, have a good one. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you next week.